is in what is, in essence, the second division, the National League, but I don't want you to get the impression that the racing is second rate. Far from it, it really is most exciting because of the, the adventurous and the committed approach of the young riders. Well, every year, the top eight clubs compete in the FSO National Fours final, and this year has proved to be a real classic. It's a very easy format, it completed in one meeting, Four clubs in each semi-final run over eight heats, and the top two quartets in each moving into the final again over eight heats. Newcastle and Milton Keynes went through in the first semi-final. Let's join Dave Lanning to find out which other two teams joined them in the final. As we approach the final stages of this second semi-final, it looks certain that Milton Hall will go forward, and that is pleasing the large contingent of Fen Tigers fans here at Old Walton. The big battle for second place with Long Eaton and Edinburgh both on eight points with two remaining. Looking at the lineup for heat number seven on the inside, yellow and black from Weymouth, Stan Beer. Next to him in white from Edinburgh, Mark Fiora. Grid three has the exciting Carl Baldwin from Milton Hall and on the outside, Alan Bonneneau from Long Eaton. Here we go for heat number seven. Touch the tension out there as the tapes go. It's an even break. It looks like Beer's got to the corner for a stand there, leads it in second place. Oh, Baldwin got pushed right out there and going higher around the outside is Fiore. Here comes Carl Baldwin again. Inside one, trying to go outside the other one. Runs out of track and it is Beer in front of Wayne. This could really open things up and it's getting a little bit tight at the back as now Fiora moves through into second place. And out there where the drive is, the action is thick and fast. And here comes Baldwin through on the inside again, and down has gone Mark Fiora. The race continues, it's quite dented. No exclusion light comes on, this could sadly affect Edinburgh's chances of qualification because up in front here, and the bike's still on the track, and they're gonna have to get a move on. Oh! Well, that uh, was almost a nasty incident, and the red light was slow coming on, and it must be said, the bike was slow coming off and the track staff man seems to be strong the clutch has seized up and let's look at the incident again as Baldwin moves through on the inside of Fiora there it is he moves through now is there any contact well you can see there's daylight between them and Fiora really should try to turn back instead of which he just kept going and looked like he was trying to pick up Baldwin Dan he's gone into the fence and, uh, well, he managed to really knock the sting out of the four before coming into collision with the fence. So uh, let's have a look at the lineup again now. Bear on the inside, then Baldwin on the outside. Molyneux, away they go. And again, Stan Bear, this uh, resourceful Australian, moves in front. Baldwin trying the inside one. There's no drive down there. Nearly saw that. So now the battle up front with Bear in front. Second place, Baldwin. Third place is Molyneux. This is more encouraging for White. This will bring them right back into the battle. And Baldwin is out in the dirt. And finding it difficult to make his turns. All battle away there. Bear in front. Just back from an injury. He is a never say die character from Queensland. Second place Baldwin. In the low the machine streamlining. Third place Mono. And Bear is riding it exactly right. He's out where the drive is. You can see how he pulls away, getting his wheels back in line quickly around these corners. It's going to be difficult to get under people here as this track dries out. Hot, sultry after there's some sunshine about. And Baldwin has moved out high, middle and outside. Not going to catch Stan there. And these three points are being the Wildcats from Weymouth right back into contention for a place in the final. He wins it second place, Baldwin. Third place, Molyneux. And he has opened up the battle for the second qualification place. Milton Hall are going to go through, but who's going to go with them into that final to join Milton Keynes and Newcastle? We have Long Eaton on nine points, Edinburgh on eight points, and Weymouth on seven points. So let's have a look at the lineup on the inside. It's Paul Stead from Long Eaton. He had a third place, but looked a little bit shaky first time out. Next to him, Robert Henry in red for Milton Hall. Then we have in white, Edinburgh play their reserve, Australian Brett Saunders and Weymouth boldly play theirs as well. This young Gordon Humphreys on the outside. What a time to come into the action for this young man from Dorset. He's on the outside in yellow and black. The last team of the second semi-final with everything to go for. Henry has gone clear and going with him hard is Saunders around the dirt and Saunders is right out on the fence. And he moves into second place and third place it is Stead. 
And, uh, well, this is going to make it very interesting because we could have a tie for second place. And as they both had equal race winners, it's all down to Saunders. And Saunders is busting a gut to try and get past Rob Henry. And that would wrap it up for Edinburgh if he could get through. They have lost Humphrey, so three riders only. Still Rob Henry. That's not a very cool, calm customer this afternoon. Out running a perfect line, second place Saunders. And way back, Sned. Into the last lap and still Saunders. Seems to have lost his footrest. Brett Saunders has lost his footrest and there's drama. Down he has gone. And moving through into second place, it is Paul Stead and Long Eaton are going to do it. And once again, the drama really has come right at the last knockings. A win for Rob Henry, second place Stead and Edinburgh's Brett Saunders. It looked like he might be steering his side into the final, just lost his footrest and lost it on the very last lap. So after that dramatic conclusion to the second semi-final, Milton Hall and Long Eaton went through to join Newcastle and Milton Keynes in the final. So here's Dave Lanning again. Looking at the lineup for Heat 1, in red, Rod Hunter, Newcastle. Grid 2 in blue, Paul Clark, Milton Keynes. Grid 3, Carl Baldwin in white, from Milton Hall on the outside, John Franklin from Long Eaton. And again, you can see how tense it is out there. Was Clark who was lucky to escape exclusion and now uh, Hunter is going back and well the gamesmanship we haven't even started the final and the kidology has started. So here we go, come on lads, settle down, meet one. And away this time and it got a bit to Hexing there. It was Hunter who moved out, and Baldwin coming into second place got squeezed out. A ruthless piece of riding up to the first corner by the Newcastle rider. Now Baldwin's going after him. Hunter leads it. Third place is Clark. This Franklin. Newcastle, of course, the holders determined to hang on. They won just about everything inside in National League Speedway. Ron Hunter, this Aussie, who when he does get clear, does go quickly. And Baldwin chasing hard after him been the victim of all the pushing and shoving up to the first corner. The track has been graded and the shell more evenly distributed. It's certainly suiting Rod Hunter. I don't think Baldwin's going to get up here and he won. And this looks like the battle will be predicted for the title Newcastle and Milton Hall, perhaps the two outstanding National League sides with, of course, Milton Keynes, who could be spoilers, with Craig Pendle very unbeaten. Don't be seeing him into the later stages of the final. But Hunter gets the diamonds off on a sparkling note for Baldwin, who never really recovered from uh, a little bit of elbowing up to the first corner in second place. Paul Clark was third from Milton Keynes. Well, Rod Hunter really rode a ruthless line up to the first corner in heat one. But watch him on the inside. You see, he moves out. He moves Clark over. Clark, in turn, moves Carl Baldwin over. Baldwin gets really a frightful knock. But that's Speedway Racing. Hunter's gone clear. And just watch how Carl Baldwin recovered from that indignity. Sweeping around the outside. But he could not improve on that second placing. So the two form horses absolutely neck and neck as we move into heat five. Newcastle 10, Milden Hall 10, Milton Keynes then in uh, third place on three points, Long Eaton on one. And uh, the Fen Tigers now bring Derek Harrison into the action. Let's look at the lineup on the inside. In the blue helmet, it is Keith White. Next to him in yellow, it is Paul Evans. Then we have Rod Hunter on the outside, Derek Harrison. As away we go, and from the inside it is Keith White who gets clear. Harrison going through the middle of the two opponents, but Hunter has gone away. So it is Newcastle, Milton Hall in third place, Keith White. And again, it really was a bold first corner. And the two favourites battling it out up front with Hunter, this fast starting, ruthless Australian in front. Derek Harrison, who really grabbed a handle of throttle on the first two corners, chasing hard after him. Third place, Keith White at the back, Paul Evans. And can Harrison get up around the outside? Almost running out of track there into lap three. Rear battle, and here comes Harrison. And Hunter was looking for him the wrong way, looked on the inside, and Harrison really caught him sleeping. <laughs> that was a marvelous moment if you have to be a Milton Hall fan. But what a mistake from Harrison, uh, rather from Hunter. And Hunter seemed to be over the inside line there, and he'd be kicking him 
himself because that really was a slip on the last uh, lap around about that place down there and now he really is busting a gut to try and get back in front but a fine piece of opportunism from Derek Harrison he wins in second place Hunter third there just in case you're watching there it was Keith White well, what a moment for Derek Harrison he really caught it with his trousers down well, there's an old adage in Speedway that you mustn't look back, you lose time. You can see Rod Hunter here is looking for Derek Harrison down the inside. He shoots a glance just about here, you can see there. He knows exactly where he is. And Harrison tries the outside run. Now, you would have thought the Australian would have got the message. As they hurtle down into lap three, again you'll see he looks down the inside for Harrison. Harrison's attacking, looks over his shoulder there and Harrison sees his opportunity around the outside and that really was opportunism and it means a win for Ben Tigers and Hunter will not be happy with himself. Well, just three heats left, one point in it, Milden Hall on 13, Newcastle on 12, but now we wonder if we're going to get a fresh element because coming in for Milton Keynes in blue, Craig Pendlebury, who was unbeaten in his semi-final He'll ride twice in the last three heats, and that really could make a vital difference to the overall standings. And we also have Dave Perks in heat six. He'll be in yellow and black and on the inside, and he's a menace as well. Let's look at that lineup, because it should be some race. On the inside, Perks, Long Eaton, yellow and black. Next to him, Richard Knight, who won his first race in such a resourceful way. He'll be in white. Grid three has Craig Pendlebury in blue from Milton Keynes and on the outside Bobby Beaton from Newcastle as we really approach what should be a boiling climax, heat six and Knight has been left again on the inside of his perks Knight has ridden an immaculate first corner around the curve as Beaton tries the outside run and Dan has gone Bobby Beaton, there just was no room, the bike has gone on he ran out of room there and the race continues although Beaton is still prostrate on the track, they've got to stop it Oh. There is Bobby Beaton down, and he did give the fence a quote. We'll look at the incidents again, and let's watch to see what happens on the outside. We can see, after a shaky start, Richard Knight comes through on the curb. Now, watch Craig Pendlebury in blue, and watch Bobby Beaton here on the outside. Now, is Pendlebury being deliberately obstructive? He's moved way out high and takes Beaton out. Now, is there any contact here? Still daylight, down goes Bobby Beaton, he had nowhere much to go. And the referee, Jeff Dorby, says Pendlebury is guilty of foul riding. And down goes Beaton and the bike continues riderless. And the ambulance is on the track, but the referee, Jeff Dorby, is saying that Pendlebury is guilty of the offence there. And once again, we have controversy really coming thick and fast here in this National Forest final. Well, there is Craig Pendlebury, who clearly is saying, I never touched him, and feeling very aggrieved. He's a door, no-nonsense Yorkshireman, tough old boy, Craig Pendlebury. Asks no quarter and gives none, and it may well be that he has good reason for feeling that he's had a rough deal. And the word on Bobby Beaton's damage is it's an ankle injury, and he has been taken to hospital for precautionary x-rays. Well, how will Milden Hall respond to that controversial incident of course Richard Knight was out of all the uh, controversy around the first two corners there now the diamonds without Bobby Beaton who's gone off to hospital for x-rays on an ankle his replacement Martin Scarris there he is in the red helmet colour fine time for him to come into the action relatively inexperienced three starters only no Pendlebury inside Dave Perks in yellow and black then Richard Knight on the outside Martin Scarris and away they go, and again, Perks has got clear, and Richard Knight's bike did not fire up to the first corner, and Scarris Brick is going right around the outside. Oh, oh, the young man from Newcastle really is getting his teeth into this first ride, and Knight is getting back into contention. It's Perks in front. Knight is now back up on the back wheel of Scarris Brick and into the pit corner, and Richard Knight trying the inside run as they all bunch up here in heat six, and this could be an important one, and indeed, telling on the final result and this young man from Newcastle really is riding a blinder. Lap three, still perks in front and Scarsbrick trying the outside run, he might have him this time, he has. 
and this has opened up this fourth title. It really has. Here comes Perks again, and we have a real race on, and Richard Knight's back inside as well as we come into the last lap, and they're pushing and shoving it. Here comes Richard Knight through on the inside, and it's all getting tight there, and Scarisbrook has gone around the outside, and Perks has gone with him, and what else could happen here as they come in to the last lap and the last corner, and it's going to be Scarisbrook who wins it. Knight is second, Perks is third, and that was unbelievable speedway. Oh, what a race. You will not see a better one than that. Scarisbrook won it. Knight somehow squeezed through. Perks went from last to first to first to last. It was remarkable. And the crowd rightly are overwhelmed. Well, a last lap when it really did all happen. As they go over the final lap flag, you can see it perks in front, Scarisbrook's on the outside. Knight makes his big effort around the curb, and he's in front of though, he's bucking all over the place. Scarisbrook, what a bold, brave rider this lad is. Around the outside, sweeping down the fence, along the boards. They're virtually shoulder to shoulder, all three, as they go into the last two corners. Scarisbrook in front, perks here comes Richard Knight on the inside, absolutely three together. Knight pulls horrendous locker, holds on, but Scarisbrook is out safe, and he wins, and that has brought Newcastle right back into contention. Well, two to go, and we really have had some memorable racing here at Peterborough, and it's all over by any means, because in heat, number seven, with Milden Hall and Newcastle tied on 15 points apiece on the inside, Alan Molyneux, Long Eaton, Yellow and Black. Next to him in white, Derek Harrison from Milden Hall. Grid three in red, Joe Owen from Newcastle on the outside, Paul Clark from Milton Keats. Here we go for heat number seven. Away, and it looks like Harrison, and so too has gone Molyneux, and Molyneux has knocked Harrison out as they're getting terribly tight down the outside. Owen and Harrison together, and how did they avoid the fence there? Joe Owen, well, he took his life in his hands. What a corner from Owen. There could not have been room for an ice cream wafer between here and the fence, but he's in front, and he's going for home. in the first two corners Harrison chasing hard after him in third place is Molyneux but that's academic it's all about the big two up front and it's going to be all down to a last hit beside of the last lap Owen who really deserves three points for his courage if nothing else he's going to win 8-7 and that takes Newcastle into the last race one point in front Owen wins it Harrison is second and in third place it's Molyneux and we have action and drama and questions to answer right until the last checkered flag of this FSO National Fours title chase. And there is the victory wheelie from Joe Owen. He's done his bit. We now must wait and see what happens in the last race. What a finish it should be. Shadow's been into length in here at Peterborough. But certainly it'll be a long time before the crowd here will forget the speedway they've seen. Because right until the last race, and it's coming up right now, there has been something to watch and questions to be answered. It's all on the last race. Newcastle on 18 points. Milden Hall on 17. One behind Rob Henry will be the Milden Hall representative, and he hasn't been beaten. And Alan Emerson in the red helmet will ride for Newcastle, and he won his first ride. Looking at the lineup on the inside, we have Craig Pendlebury, and he could be the spoiler in blue from Milton Keynes. Next to him, we have Alan Emerson. Grid three has Rob Henry on the outside from Long Eaton, Paul Stead. The red and white helmet's the one to watch with Pendlebury, the spoiler, on the inside. It's all down to this one, the FSO national team title, and away they go. And who is it showing? And written uh, very wide indeed. Emerson took out Henry, and Henry's bursting down the outside of Pendlebury. It's Emerson in front. Here comes Henry as they load. Henry's gone down, and the drama is there right until the last moment with Emerson in front. And Henry took the gambler's throw and the dice turned against him and right to the final curtain we have, well not drama, it's theatrical Newcastle are going to hang on 
Emerson in front, while Alan Emerson's just got to get around two laps there, and Newcastle Hearts will be beating and hoping that machine doesn't miss a beat because he's just got to hang on now to uh, give the Diamonds from Tyneside a slice of Speedway history. No time has won this title on three occasions. Newcastle won it in 76, last year they won it, and Emerson has got less than a lap of this 347-metre track to go, and surely he's not going to make any mistakes now. Over the line, the title goes back to Tyneside. Second place, Pendlebury. Third there was Paul Stan and poor old Rob Henry, who gave his all for Mildenhall, just comes home. And the Tigers have been pipped again, but my word, what an effort. And what some fantastic speedway. Really, it has been a meeting which this large crowd will be talking about for ages. Well, let's have a look at the incident when this FSO title was won and lost. Emerson in front. Henry makes his bold bit around the outside. Pendlebury's in there as well. And at this moment, it looked like Rob Henry might just get around everybody. He's way out in the dirt. And as he turns back, a bike comes over. Look at that for a picture. Down, he's gone. The Tigers' hopes go with him. But, well, he certainly went down fighting. And there's the extent of Newcastle's victory. They finish with 21 points, four better than Milton Hall. Uh, Milton Keynes finish in third place with six, and Long Eaton in fourth place with four.